The multiverse, the new Final Frontier. What once was used as a massive event for canonical rewrites in comic books, or a concept used in cartoons for adults with a very high IQ, the multiverse is now seen by mainstream audiences across all of media. You see it in TV shows, movies, video games. Even I'm doing a multiverse. Guys, I want you to meet a very special guest, Agent P3 from a universe where I always wear it at. Uh, come on, man, don't be shy. Come on. Hey guys, uh, I'm Agent P3 from a universe where I, I wear a red hat. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? <clears throat> Is that all you needed me for? Yeah, that, that's or... all I needed you for. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Because I was gonna ask if I can use the bathroom. I didn't know like how to like oh, properly um, pass. So yeah, it's just right past that door. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so, because I got really gotta yeah, no, go. Totally so I'm, uh, thank that's you that's for having that's me. That's that's uh, really I'll be cool. back. I'm just gonna use the bathroom real quick. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see y'all later. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Bye. 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 Yeah, so he's kind of stuck here from his universe, so he's going to be here for a minute. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What exactly is the multiverse? The multiverse, short for multiple universes, is a concept of separate universes, realities, dimensions, and or timelines that run parallel to each other. While most people know the multiverse through science fiction, physicists have actually been theorizing about the multiverse's existence for centuries. In fact, the multiverse was first thought of by Greek philosophers in the BI times, uh, before the internet. And with developments in physics over the years, such as theory of relativity, string theory, and quantum mechanics, uh, thanks, Oppenheimer. Physicists have actually made plausible theories of the multiverse's existence, theories that can actually be seen in some recent multiverse films. And studios use elements of these theories for both movies that use the multiverse to enhance its plot and characters, and movies that use the multiverse to lazy tiny IPs they already own. Hey, yo, P3. Uh, yeah, P3 Red Hat. What's up, man? Yeah, man, I just want to know the password to your second channel so I can start streaming over there, you know, per our agreement. Oh, um, <clears throat> can, can we talk about this later? Uh, I'm, I'm, like, still filming something oh, right now. Oh, so like... shoot. My bad, man. Yeah, no, it's all good. Sorry, I didn't realize. Good. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I'll just you know, I'll just be in the corner, yeah. and I'll, I'll let you do your thing. My bad, man. All right. Anyway, I thought it'd be fun to take some of these recent multiverse movies and rank them by scientific accuracy. Fascinating stuff, I know, but I'm an earn, I can't help it, shut up. Using this chart, I'm gonna rank these movies from accurate, sorta accurate, and not so accurate. Now, I hope this goes without saying, but I'm not a quantum physicist. I'm a mechanical engineer, which is like physics, but a lot dumber. Ooh, bad joke. Oh, wow, you're funny. Most of my findings came from about eight to 10 hours of research with a few quantum physics experts checking over my script and answering my questions. If you want more info, I'll leave the sources I use for this video in the description below. Now to kick off this ranking, let's start off with the movie that letterbox in the Oscars the door. Let that girl be playing games and won't text you back. I know where you live, Brittany. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Everything Everywhere All at Once tells the story of a dysfunctional Chinese American family in a financial crisis who learned to fix their family while going on a multiverse hopping adventure. If you haven't watched this movie yet, what are you doing? Literally stop this video right now and watch the movie. It's on everyone's movies to watch before they die list. And if you end up not liking the movie, well, that's one less movie you have to watch before you die. Now, this movie at its core is an emotional, heartfelt saga that uses the multiverse as a tool to explore themes of existentialism, nihilism, and generational trauma. Ism. But some of its lore is based on multiverse theory. The directors, the Daniels, were inspired by the Cosmic Bubbles theory and the many roles interpretation. The Cosmic Bubbles theory essentially maps out the greater multiverse by saying that each universe takes place in its own bubble and they flow around each other. Kind of like blood cells in a bloodstream. Images inspired by the Cosmic Bubbles theory can be seen throughout the film. The many worlds interpretation is a theory outlined by American physicist Hugh Everett III, and it states that a new timeline is created every time a quantum state diverges into different possibilities or how the movie depicts it, every time a person makes a choice, a new universe is made. This theory is literally used as a plot device throughout the movie as the characters use the abilities of their alternate selves while verse jumping. But that's where we get to the movie's problem scientifically. Verse jumping is scientifically impossible. The only way to theoretically travel the multiverse is with the black hole, which would definitely kill you. So while we can mathematically prove that infinite universes exist using a hypothetical concept called the inflation field, that doesn't necessarily mean that there are infinite possibilities because each universe will have to follow the known laws of quantum mechanics. So while there can be a universe where you're a kung fu superstar or a blind opera singer, there can't be a universe where you're an anime character, a piñata, or a rock, which would, <laughs> which would suck because it'd be really cool to be an anime character 
or a rock if you're into that. Wait, 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 wait. If it's so hard to travel the multiverse, then how come I'm here? Well, that's actually quite simple. See, using Max Techmart's third law of So, everything, everywhere, all at once got two aspects of multiverse theory right, but it didn't quite get multiversal travel. With that in mind, I'm okay with ranking it between accurate and sort of accurate, which, spoiler for the rest of this list, it's probably gonna be the most accurate multiverse movie on this ranking. But hey, speaking of multiverse movies, the MCU had two of those, so let's talk about those, because I'm great at transitions. Let's talk about the MCU multiverse movies. Okay, technically the MCU and the Spider-Verse movies take place in the same multiverse since they're both under the Marvel umbrella, but for the sake of this video, we're going to separate them because their approaches to the multiverse are slightly different. The MCU had a strong start to the multiverse, uh, scientifically speaking anyway, with season one of Loki. Theoretical physicist Professor Michio Kaku expounded on Loki's use of quantum mechanics in a video on Wired's YouTube channel. Kaku states that Loki's depiction of time travel follows quantum theory's notion of time flowing like a river, and if that river broke into streams, those streams will become alternate realities. The idea of variants disrupting the quote-unquote sacred timeline plays into the idea of causing another Big Bang, which are theoretically how new universes are created. And Sylvie killing He Who Remains at the end of the show causes several Big Bangs, creating the MCU's multiverse. Wow, with Loki's strong foundation for the MCU multiverse, how does Marvel possibly follow up? They barely reference it. The scientific basis Loki laid out was pretty much ignored in No Way Home and Multiverse of Madness. In fact, there's almost little to no scientific basis in the multiverse lore for both movies. In No Way Home, the only reason for the Web and Raimi villains being in the MCU is purely based on magic slash, uh, you know, fan service, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, sure, those characters being there falls apart when you think about it for more than 10 minutes, but the movie successfully uses the multiverse for entertainment and to further develop Tom Holland's Spider-Man. The only scientific bone I can give this movie is from Peter 3 or Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man mentioning stream theory, which is often used to prove the multiverse's existence. Multiverse of Madness has a little bit more basis in multiverse theory, but it is very slim as is you'll you'll see a key plot point of multiverse of madness is how hard it is to actually travel the multiverse and while dreamwalking is not a plausible way of doing so america chavez's multiverse portals can't be seen as less powerful black holes if you squint also dreams being windows into other realities has been theorized by scientists but none of it is backed up by actual proof it's more of a situation where we know little about both the multiverse and the human brain so why not combine the two for a theory which is uh <laughs> Probably a good thing because I have a history of having some uh, pretty scary dreams. Yeah, but that dream that you had last year where uh, Homelander was gonna get you, yeah, that was 100% real. Wait, that was you? Did he follow you? Is, is he here? Oh, hell no, that wasn't me. But I did have lunch for that P3 last week. Oh. Pretty chill dude. Kind of weird though. Where the blue hat set of red? Huh. But you know, yeah. All right. Wow, that was sure words you just said. But going back to this ranking, I'm pretty okay with putting No Way Home under not so accurate. I mean, there's really no science in that movie. But I'm gonna give Multiverse of Madness a little bit of an edge because it did have black holes. But if you squint, so I'm gonna put that in sort of accurate and not so accurate. Speaking of Spider-Man, he, he had two Multiverse movies recently, so let, let's talk about those. Both Spider-Verse movies are incredible, industry-changing films that use the multiverse both as fan service and to add stakes for their character. Characters who enter different universes glitch out when they don't have proper protection. This plot device could be explained through Swedish-American physicist Max Tegmark's Level 2 Multiverse Theory, which states that each universe has different physical properties, meaning that people alien to an alternate universe could struggle to survive in a new one. Are we gonna explain why I'm not glitching right now? No, we're not gonna test that. The Glitching is probably the strongest scientific bone I can throw for the Spider-Verse movies. Other things I can find were like the portals they use being seen as many black holes, again if you squint, and Miles says some sciencey things when he talks about wanting to study at Princeton. Actually, one thing he mentioned that got my attention was Princeton's expertise in dark matter, which to dumb it down the best I can, is a material that exists in space and can usually be found after a big bang. But dark matter's involvement in multiverse theory, like dreams involvement in multiverse theory, isn't based on any provable science. Also, canon events are bull. I can't really speak on them until Beyond the Spider-Verse since they weren't really explored in Across the Spider-Verse, but based on the little information we got, canon events sound more like time travel rules than anything based in multiverse theory. I guess applying the logic established by Loki, variants or variations to a specific universe's canon could be seen as disrupting that universe's timeline, creating another Big Bang and another universe. But that's just a theory. At worst, canon events are just a plot device that ties all of Spidey's mythos together. While the Spider-Verse movies got certain aspects of the multiverse theory right, most of it was either to sound smart or to raise the stakes of its plot. So 
I'm okay with putting it under sort of accurate, but right past Multiverse of Madness. Last, but <laughs> certainly least, like this next movie can't even hold a candle to any of these movies on this board, The Flash. Fire! Separating the fluster cluck of a person Ezra Miller is, I thought The Flash was aight, but it's so obvious that Warner Bros. wanted to use a multiverse for easy fan service. But it did actually depict a version of the mini world interpretation. Barry going back in time to save his mom and creating an alternate reality has been theorized to happen if time travel existed. And I guess those CGI orbs Barry sees in the Speed Force could tie into the Cosmic Bubbles theory, but like a lot of these movies, it works if it's squint. So ranking this movie, uh, I I don't know. I, I guess sort of accurate would be okay, even though it was sort of accurate that WB didn't think about the script for more than five minutes. So it turns out uh, none of these movies are really all that accurate, which I mean, shocking, right? Like who would have guessed? But that's okay because the multiverse itself is just a theory, and these movies give us a window into certain aspects of that theory. While the multiverse is still a theory, the idea has always fascinated me. Like, think about it. There could be a version of you right now that made all the right choices in life and is super successful, rich, and famous because of it. Are you rich, successful, and or famous? No. Or maybe the idea is depressing and makes you not want to live in this universe anymore. Either way, how it's depicted in movies is at best entertaining and simulating, and at worst, an embarrassment. So while we're still making advancements in multiverse theory IRL, it's cool to see the creative, philosophical, or just downright entertaining interpretations of the multiverse we see in media today. And I can't wait to see what cool things people do with the multiverse in the future, uh, scientifically accurate or not. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, I'm, my name is Perry, but I'm, I'm not Perry from your universe. I'm Perry from a different universe. Why am I streaming? So Perry and I made a deal. He wanted to utilize me for content. So in my universe, I am a famous Twitch streamer. I played a game called The Boys. My universe is like a popular AAA game. We played as Huey's ex-girlfriend, you know, the girlfriend that H.A. killed in the first episode of, of Your All Universe. We played as her, so it was a pretty pretty short game. But the Flash movie. In my universe, The Flash is still made, was still played by Edward Miller, but people like the a little bit more. In my universe, Ed Miller is actually like a really cool guy. He's pretty much like a young Tom Hanks. Of course, we're Tom Hanks side of a, a Coke overdose. It's what are called Ed over there. I don't know why you want to name something a single letter. That's, that's so weird. It's like Agent D3. Like, what kind of name is that? But yeah, I mean, at least we, we got people watching it. That's pretty cool. I, I cannot analyze movies and TV shows like Perry can. He, he's doing some good work. But he's such a bitch. Like, I hate him. <laughs> hey, I'm going to call from the boss, uh, Perry. Uh, hey, what's up, man? Hey, uh, can you stop the stream? Huh? Uh, you watched me stream and you think this is a bad idea? Not as funny as you thought it was gonna be? Um, okay, you want me to stop the stream? Please stop the stream, man. Uh, okay. I mean, is it because I called you a I don't know, those are some kind of